Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fleckdish channel. A plane that could fly under the radar eluded the U.S. Air Force until the 1980s. That's when the first aircraft to use stealth technology first took to the skies. The F-117 Nighthawk, as it was named, was created by Lockheed Advanced Development Projects and Secret. On the 25th anniversary of that 1981 flight, the planes were showcased at Hallman Air Force Base in New Mexico. The agile stealth fighters are single-seat, twin-engine aircraft. Their unique, sharply angled profiles are why these fighters were so valuable. The slanted surfaces deflect radar signals, making the aircraft untraceable. In 2008, the F-117 Nighthawk was officially retired. However, a portion of the fleet has been kept in airworthy condition. And like its secretive abilities, the status of its retirement is also hush-hush. Nighthawks have been observed flying since 2009. Designed during the Cold War and first flown in 1989, the B-2 Spirit is the largest stealth aircraft ever made. With a wingspan half the length of a football field, this massive bomber can carry up to 40,000 pounds of bombs, including nuclear bombs. To keep its sleek stealth profile, the B-2 transports all its weapons internally. It's fitted with two separate weapons bays in the center of its body. The B-2 Spirit is an incredibly valuable asset to the U.S. Air Force and the military as a whole. In wartime, it's often flown into action on the first night. Another remarkable feature is its shape and low profile. Called a flying wing design, the B-2 has no tail or fuselage. Because of that, it lacks conventional stabilizing surfaces and is often unstable and difficult to control. That's why the B-2 is a rather slow plane. At top speed, it can travel only at 630 miles per hour. The flying wing concept is most suited to subsonic aircraft. No supersonic flying wing has ever been built. However, the B-2 can fly at incredible heights. It is known to perform attack missions up to 50,000 feet and has an unrefueled range of more than 6,000 nautical miles. If it needs to travel a longer range, the B-2 Spirit can be refueled in flight. Watch as the stealth holds its position about 20 feet below the tanker. The tanker extends its boom and offloads thousands of pounds of fuel at a time. This aerial refueling allows the B-2 Spirit to stay airborne long enough to complete extreme missions. In fact, this stealth aircraft holds the record for the longest air combat mission in history.
In 2001, the Spirit of America and five other B-2s were the first to enter Afghan airspace for a record-setting 44-hour mission. However, it's not all praise for these bombers. B-2 spirits were controversial for their cost. To manufacture each would take more than $1 billion in today's dollars. 21 were produced between the years 1988 and 2000. In the coming years, the B-2 will be replaced by the B-21 Raider, recently unveiled by Northrop Grumman. According to Northrop Grumman, the new stealth bomber will be capable of delivering both conventional and nuclear payloads. It incorporates the latest technology to be the most effective stealth aircraft in the sky. The U.S. Air Force has stated plans to acquire at least 100 B-21s, though a production schedule has not been announced yet. One of the newest stealth fighters is the F-22 Raptor. Also developed by Lockheed Martin, it replaced the F-117 Nighthawk. Like the Nighthawk, the Raptor is also a one-seat, twin-engine aircraft. However, it's superior because it has air-to-air -air combat capabilities, which the Nighthawk did not. It also is visibly different, with a more aerodynamic exterior compared to the sharp angles of the Nighthawk. The stealth coating process is one in which the aircraft is coated in radar-absorbent polymers. These materials are capable of absorbing 70 to 80 percent of the energy from radar, so an enemy cannot detect the plane. It's not a one-time touch-up job. Each airplane requires a three-week packaged maintenance plan every 300 flight hours. Today, robots paint the body and crevices of the Raptor, which cuts labor hours from 1,600 hours to just 300. If this technology didn't exist, we'd still be doing it the old way, which would mean you have a person putting on a Tyvek suit, crawling into a confined space, laying on their back, and trying to spray this large circular tube in a consistent manner. To get the aircraft back into service is gonna be five times as long. We now come in with a robot that will do it repeatable, which means we're spraying at the same thickness every time. Like the B-2, the F-22 normally carries its weapons internally to maintain its stealth profile. It has three internal weapons bays, a large main bay on the bottom of the fuselage, and two smaller bays on the sides of the fuselage. Teams of airmen compete to see who's the fastest and most effective F-22 weapons loader. These guys train constantly, and really the only way they get to show how well they do is in front of people. I feel like the fact that we know exactly what our positions and what our roles are and how we load together, I feel like that helped with the, the ease of, of the load. I feel like that, that helped us become uh, more relaxed. Lockheed Martin equips the F-22 with the most modern systems and features a military jet could carry. It's also incredibly fast and can travel at more than Mach 2 with afterburners on the engines. Due to its classified nature, the United States Air Force is the only operator of the F-22.
As of August 2022, it has 183 aircraft in its inventory. It isn't just planes that are stealth-enabled. Boats can be, too. Seen in 2016 in Bath, Maine, the USS Zumwalt sets sail for San Diego, California. The Navy has three ships in the Zumwalt class. Borrowing from stealth technology we saw in aircraft, these destroyers are shaped to reduce their radar signature. Vertical surfaces are avoided because they easily reflect radar beams directly back to the emitter. Instead, angled surfaces are used, which are more likely to absorb the beams. The Naval Sea Systems Command has claimed that during testing, the Zumwalt appears to look like a small fishing boat. The Zumwalt ships are different from previous destroyer classes. Rather than being designed primarily for deep water combat, these stealth destroyers were created to support ground forces in land attacks, in addition to the usual destroyer missions of anti-air, anti-surface, and anti-submarine warfare. In October 2020, the USS Zumwalt successfully executed the first live-fire test of the MK-57 vertical launching system with a standard missile. The ship's stealth and their ability to operate in both the open ocean and near-shore environments create a new level of battle space complexity for potential adversaries. And there's continued improvement. The Chief of Naval Operations said in early 2022 that there's enough space and weight margin aboard the Zumwalt class destroyers to install two tubes for hypersonic missiles without removing the ship's gun mounts. By 2025, the first 16,000-ton Zumwalt class destroyer will have at least two sets of missile tubes inserted on the port and starboard sides of the ship without having to remove the gun mounts. Other stealthy ships that can go near the shoreline include littoral combat ships. The Freedom Class and the Independence Class were the first two LCS variants. The USS Billings, seen at sea near Puerto Rico in April 2022, is a member of the Freedom Class. This ship is smaller and more agile than any in the Zumwalt class. According to the Navy, it is a highly maneuverable, lethal, and adaptive ship designed to support focused missions, including mine countermeasures, anti-submarine warfare, and surface warfare. The USS Billings often participates in anti-drug trafficking missions in the Caribbean and Eastern Pacific. The mission is helped by helicopters or unmanned vehicles as part of the Navy's goal to unman the front lines. When the U.S. military needs to perform clandestine missions, stealth aircraft and ships are critical. The physical attributes and technology employed by these vehicles allow them to quite literally fly and float under the radar.
In wartime, the ability to remain invisible to enemy detection is essential for both offensive and defensive missions. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.